And welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Bub and the Bloom, episode 125. Going to get you ready for the week four fab coming at you this weekend with your schedules, your two-star pitchers, and much, much more. Get you caught up with some recent news and probably some more Masters dialogue or something fun because it's a good time of the year. You can find me on Twitter at BDNTrick, the podcast at Bubba Bloom Pod, and my co-host, as always, on Twitter at Ryan BHQ. Ryan Bloomfield, how we doing, my friend? I'm great, man. Yeah, the, the Masters Dialogue, we're bringing that to the forefront because that, that was what was on my mind today. It was um, I, obviously, uh, I, I well, not obviously, but folks that know, you know I, I was there last year and watching it once you've been there is really freaking cool. Um, so, yes, a light day on the baseball. I think there were only like, what four games today? Because there were a couple of rainouts. And There's like yeah, five games. Five games. Five games. So a good a good light day for baseball. So I, I I will admit I had both eyes, maybe one eye on the Masters, one eye on my day job, and if I had a third eye, I'd be on baseball. But I don't. So yeah, I didn't miss too much. You saw your boy Lawson's, Alan Lawson's. Get, yes, uh... yes. <laughs> Lived up to his name. Um, did not even have the worst pitching line of the day, though. No, that Hunter goes to Hunter Brown. Brown. Good God. Yeah, that was the talk of the town, Hunter Brown, today. And we have a listener question on that. So we'll oh, uh, we'll definitely get to him. Or it might have been a question to me, but we'll bring it up on the listener question part. Sure. About holding, dropping, what are we doing with Hunter Brown? Because there are some interesting questions there. Yeah, Winans already got sent back to AAA. As oh, did he? Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so it, opens, it opens the door again. Is it AJ smith Is it Dylan Dodd? Is it Bryce Elder? Stay tuned. So we, so we can basically go back to the exact same conversation we had last week about yep. cycling, going down this rabbit hole of trying to find six starters for your injured starting yep. pitchers. And this is what the Braves did last year when they needed uh, pitchers. These like three or four guys just kept getting cycled through there. They didn't. And none like of them if, really did much. No, they, they, most of them got blown up. And then they just said, yeah. "Okay, you go back to your play. We'll try the next guy." And they just kept doing it over and over. Bryce Elder kind of had a moment, but he was like such a pitch to contacty guy. You're waiting for the blow up, and it finally happened. So uh, we'll see how that plays out. But uh, we'll get to you some a couple pieces of news here. Lars Newtbar, finally. I feel like on the first pitch podcast, I've been saying it almost every day that Newtbar's back, Newtbar's back, and then he doesn't come back. He is activated. He got activated from the IL. Newtbar will rejoin the Cardinals on Friday. Uh, Pages, the third catcher that they called up because Wilson Contreras had his issue. He went back to AAA. So Newtbar's there. Victor Scott lives to see another day. Um, I'd imagine Newbar slides right back into center field, which makes it really interesting to see what happens to Victor Scott. Yeah, that's the squeeze because, yeah, Lars Newbar is or should be their center fielder. I mean, last year, Newbar played 73 games there. And Victor Scott, we're starting to get to that point where, like, how long can we keep this going? The average is 091, the OBP, and even just, I know the, the glove is good, whatever, but like the OBP is 163. The slugging is lower than OBP, which is yep. great. Um, so you wonder how long that can go. I, I Lars, Lars Newbar, I think plays plays every day. Um, someone's some something's got to give. I think it's got to be Victor Scott at some point because it's bad. Yeah, I thought he'd go down eventually. When they called up Pages the other day, it's like okay, that kind of makes sense. They don't need three catchers. Um, maybe yeah. that means Wilson's hands a little better to at least play backup catcher for now. But, uh, yeah, be something to watch because that Cardinals offense is bad right now. We'll get to that when we talk schedules. It is not good. So, um, Victor Scott can't keep dragging him down for too much longer, one would think. Chase Silseth, elbow inflammation. Similar to Josiah Gray, though, positive el edge of elbow inflammation. No structural damage, all that kind of stuff. We'll see what it plays out. He's going to be shut down. The typical elbow inflammation stuff for Amber Valdez is supposed to play catch this weekend. So maybe his is it, maybe it's something along that world where, you know, it's going to be a three week thing, three to four weeks. We'll see when still Seth goes to the IL, the car, they call up Carson Fulmer. That doesn't do anything for oh, me. That's yeah, a name. A blast <laughs> from the past. Yes. Yep. Um, so there's really nothing you can do here. I guess the question is, and we don't have a timeline, which makes it tough. But like in 12s, I'm dropping still Seth. Yeah. Uh, I, it's tough. That, that's what I want. Cause I do have a lot of still Seth and I'm, We'll see. I haven't looked at Fab. Um, I typically don't look at Fab until after we do our show. Just work, work smarter, not harder. But I feel like I'm going to lean Sil to keep Silseth and 15 teamers. Mm -hmm. But we'll we'll see what the rosters look like. It's certainly a um, a reasonable cut if you are holding other injured guys and that sort of thing in 15s. And I think in 12s, absolutely. Because Silseth, I mean, 
looked up looked okay in his last start, which makes the injury yep. even weirder. I know he gave up three home runs in one inning <laughs> to the Red Sox in his last start, but outside of that, he was he was okay. Um, so I don't know. Uh, uh, Jose Soriano pitch yep. started, I think, a game yep. for the Angels. That's not that's not an option either. So. It could be though. I'll, I'll I'll put a little bit onto that. Um, he was a reliever. Um, got stretched out to sixty pitches, so they're stretching him out. So take a lot of that with a grain of salt. Um, you have to go back, go search Mike Curlin's Twitter if you want to see some rambling. But he broke down like the pitch, the, the pitch usage, pitch mix, and everything. Like the result wasn't great, but what the pitches he used and the success that some of them had, it was promising type situation. So there could be an angle there. I'm still like not running to go add him on the waiver wire, but it could be an option if you're desperate in a deeper format. So and he's got a two step this week. Not probably the best. I'd have to go look at it when we talk about two step pitchers because I just went right past it because it's Soriano. But um, at, at Tampa, at Cincinnati, yeah, the Great American Small Parks would turn me off on that one right out the gate. So, yeah, maybe see how these two starts go, and uh, maybe they get him stretched out to close to the ninety pitches, and that's an option to get real cheap the following week. Something to think about. Brent Rooker. All right, let me. Uh, Get this appropriately on here because uh, <laughs> vocabulary had, lesson, spelling lesson here. I had to Google this earlier for one of my articles I have to write every day. Before it, before it was Bubba's Bible lessons, and now it's anatomy. So go, this go one's ahead. tough. This one's tough. Brent Rooker was placed on the ten-day IL retroactive to April eighth with a costochondral cartilage injury. Okay, so I googled it. A costal chondral cartilage injury, say that five times fast, is damage to the cartilage between the ribs and the sternum. So basically what connects the ribs to the sternum and usually has rib fractures involved in it. We don't know much more than what the ACE told us, but if it's anything cartilage related, you basically have to become a couch potato to let that thing heal. You can't do anything physical. You're not lifting things. You're not running. You're not swinging. You're literally maybe driving to the ballpark hanging out, sitting on the bench, going back to the house. Like, that's pretty much your game plan. So, yeah, it might be a little bit in my mind for Rooker. Agreed. And I'm just trying to see if, like – and so I think if it is a little bit, and it sounds like it will be, I think Rooker's, Rooker's a drop. He was already kind of fringe and yeah. 15 teamers. Um, looking at corner outfielders for the A's, because, again, like motto of the show, guys on bad teams that play every day are – are interesting, but they just platoon. They platoon at Seth Brown and left, and it's Lawrence Butler and right. But both yeah. of those guys look like platoon bats. Uh, Butler did start against a lefty, hit ninth on Wednesday, and there's some speed upside there. Um, and Seth Brown, actually, at least a couple years ago, uh, he was he was pretty attractive from a power and a little bit of speed standpoint. So maybe in right hand heavy weeks, I haven't looked at the Oakland schedule yet for next week i do have it up uh no it's three and three next week so um i would not be i would not be toiling in the in the oakland platoon pool for a fab this week and they called up max schumann prospect uh, not on the 40 man so there'll be a corresponding move that takes place in that one schumann played 103 games at triple a last year nine homers uh 20 steals at 277 so maybe something there we'll see as as time time goes on yeah all right, uh, good news, not injury-related news. Cody Bradford, he got that start against Oakland because Michael Lorenzen needed another rehab start. Cody Bradford was filthy yet again, so that's three really good starts to the season. And on Thursday, manager Bruce Bochy said Cody Bradford will be staying in the Rangers' rotation. So then it comes down to Dane Dunning, Andrew Heaney, probably being one of those two guys, I think Heaney, because even last year he went to the bullpen as a long reliever uh, at the end of the season. Time will tell because Lorenzen should be back next week for a potential two-step. But Bradford's sticking around, which is a uh, big news for people that spent money this past week. It is. And I actually I wonder if um I mean I wonder why not why why does Lorenzen automatically have a rotation spot when he comes back? Like that's fair. That's a fair I mean, question. That that's kind of the assumption, but like I don't know. Jared Lorenzen isn't isn't anything special. He Michael has, Lorenzen, Jared Lorenzen, Jared, oh rest God. in peace, rest in peace, Jeez. great Kentucky quarterback. Big blue, big blue. Yes. Apologies, uh, Michael Lorenzen. God, um, 
hasn't had a sub four ERA since 2019. So like I and and the skills are very suspect. So I don't even know if Michael Lorenzen is like again, he falls into those late starters that could do more damage than good. Um it is nice to see, and I'll get the right Bradford. I keep wanting to say Chad Bradford, but we'll we'll say Cody Bradford. Uh sure. well deserved and the skills look fantastic and ride him while we have him probably rostered in most leagues. formats so yeah he's um, he's he's out there in most leagues like i was doing stuff earlier in nfbc uh in ocs he's only 68 percent rostered so 32 percent of leagues will be adding him this week <laughs> i'm just gonna put that out there right now well that was part of the deal was like because we talked about uh bradford as you know in our fab preview last week and we both liked him but it was like is it a permanent thing or is it just this one start against Oakland was his last start. And and now we, now we know the answer. Yep. We have some clearance on that one. Uh, Brandon Lau oblique yeah. injury going to be on the IL for a little bit here. Uh, no moves been made just yet for the Tampa Bay Rays, but you'd imagine it's Curtis Mead, Ahmed Rosario, that kind of story. Um, Lau and Mead were kind of already platooning as it was. So do they bring up a lefty to get in there? I don't know. But for now, I'd imagine Curtis Mead and Rosario get the bigger boost in that one. Yeah, and we were talking last week about who might hit second. Um, every every day since Lau has been out, it has been Curtis Mead at second base. Uh, so I agree with you there. The the number two hitter has been like Harold Ramirez against Oof. the lefties. Um, and actually, I mean, before you – before you throw up yeah, in your mouth, is, well, you already just lefties. did the, the 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 Rays do get four lefties next week. So Harold Ramirez in deep leagues, I think, is at least a option. I think he's UT only though at this point. Yeah, he's UT only. That's your fun part there too. Um, Brandon Lau, I think, unless you have IL slots, is is a drop. It's just Here that guy, go. man. So yeah. many, so many injuries. Yep, we preach this. I think every preview season with Brandon Lau and. Mm -hmm. We don't root for injuries, but when you do it over and over again, it's like the Chicago White Sox. Juan Moncada out three to six months with his adductor injury. I'd probably lean towards the longer side of this one, but you never know. Lennon Sosa, remember that name? He should get most of the run at third base. Uh, there might be a few other options. Lennon had a couple weeks where I'm like, oh, wow, he's got power. This is awesome. Then he faded into the sunset again. Well, there might not be anybody to stop him from playing regularly for the time being. So that would be the guy if you're really, really bored and need someone to play third base. That would be my target. I guess. Um, I'm curious to see if Gavin Sheets starts playing against lefties. I think he will. And plus the White Sox have like six righties next week. So Gavin Sheets will be discussed later in this show. Okay. Yeah, that uh, that makes a ton of sense. Went deep off of Bybee. Yeah, it's actually looked pretty good. Um, Alex in the chat says, how about Gavin Sheets? He, he, he looks hot. Yeah. Um, can't confirm that last part. But I was say, speak for yourself. He's been, uh, <laughs> he's been good. No, I do wonder. I do wonder if Gavin Sheets starts playing against lefties because that that's interesting. We talked about the White Sox last week, just like super streamable. However, <laughs> thoughts and prayers to Logan Allen and Ty Tanner Bybee. I know we have a uh, listener question later about Bybee. They both got lit up against this White Sox offense. I'm curious, and Bubba, you had a tweet out today about this. What's the deal with? Oscar Colas, who I think has Dude, don't some like some God. appeal in fantasy, but what what are they doing? He got he got called up and then sent back down after got what, called up for one game, pen, called up for one game, pinch hit, went back to AAA. He was the first guy called up for the Moncada deal, and um, yeah, it's the White Sox are a joke because my whole thing is yes, yeah, so Colas he hasn't proved himself in the bigs. He's been okay in the minors, but there's the pedigree, there's like excitement, there's a lot of things and. Like, what do the White Sox have to lose this year to see if he's actually got it or not? Like, I'd, I'd run him out there, figure it out. If he doesn't have it, you move on instead of going back and forth and pulling an Edward Oliveris on the kid. So, yeah, it's wouldn't, insane. Wouldn't wish the Oliveris treatment on anybody. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty bad stuff there. Last piece of news here, and we'll talk about this man more in the two step part of the show. But Edward Cabrera completed his third rehab start, five and two third shutout innings with nine strikeouts. Looked outstanding. He's looked pretty decent as all three rehab starts. He's expected to rejoin the Marlins to start the week. I believe the pitch is Tuesday and Sunday. They'll play seven games next week. So he gets the Giants in game one, which is always nice. But we'll get into Edward Cabrera when um, we start talking to start pitchers. But just for fun, Edward Cabrera is 60% uh, rostered in OCs. So you got 40% huh. of your leagues might have him available. And he is on one of the CBS uh, – 
don't want to speak out. Yes, he's on the CBS Rogers, so we'll definitely cover Cabrera. I mean, I'm interested. Um, I'm very interested. I'm interested in him. I'm also interested. So Braxton Garrett's coming back. What do you think happens with the Marlins rotation? Is it Weathers and Puck that go? Um, a Gotta lot be, of right? a lot of people are saying that's the two. Um, I think you put Puck back in the bullpen because their bullpen's already horrific right now. Put Buck, put Puck back in the a one inning role. Maybe things will be better there. I know the starting role was not great. No. We'll put him back in the bullpen and hope the shores that up. And then Weathers looks like the odd man out right now because Myers pitching good and they want to keep that prospect up there. Um, that's the assumption I am under. We'll see. But yeah. that's what I think. I mean, Puck is walking everybody. Weathers can't throw strikes either. He's not missing bats. Has his, like whether his... Weathers is avoiding blow ups, but yeah, he's not striking guys out. He's not. <laughs> he's he's literally like three pitches away from probably giving up ten runs. No, that it's... that yeah. I'm just looking at Weathers. It's a good point. Weathers has a uh, two fifty seven ERA. <laughs> A 492 Sierra, which yeah. is a uh, which is my favorite ERA estimator. It's more skills based. A 150 WHIP. It's really hard to have a 250 ERA and a 150, 150 WHIP. WHIP. Yep. So What's that, his left that, on base rate if you have the page up right now? Because that'll probably tell you a lot. 80 percent, which yeah. is huge, and and seven percent homer to fly. So it just fly balls are not leaving the yard. That that will correct as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I feel like. I feel like Weathers and probably Puck are probably unless they go six man, but which they know. could. You never know. But like you look at the Rotowire project uh, projected rotation for next week, Weathers is the first man out, which I could see. Okay. I could yeah. see that. Like you know, Puck's one of those they've worked so hard on. Like you want to try to give him as many shots as possible. But Braxton Garrett's supposed to be in a rehab start, I believe Friday. I don't think he pitched on Thursday. It's supposed to be Friday and. If all goes well, like Ryan said, we could get a Braxton Garrett next week or one more start. It's kind of been up in the air because he's just slightly behind Cabrera in getting there, but Garrett's very close as well. Cool. All right. It's fab preview time, Bloomfield. Week four, fab preview. What are we looking at as I get the banner off the page? You can explain some things. That, that pro production. Couple updates. Couple updates to the uh the schedule tool calculator, whatever, whatever the hell we're calling this thing. I did flip over the stats to from 2023 to 2024. I know we're only two weeks into the season, but uh, we will we will get with the times and go to 24. So the team, and again, anyone watching on YouTube and on our live stream can see this as we're going, but we'll we'll try and make it as podcast friendly as we can throughout the team WRC plus, which is a kind of basically just a general like how good are you at offense? And I like WRC plus because 100 is average. Uh, we have flipped that over to 2024. So I, I think as we talk through some of these teams, some of the surprises, we'll we'll touch on that. And then and then the um, pre, the opposing starting pitchers, we flipped their strikeout minus walk rate to 2024 uh, numbers as well. So the the scheduling tools now with the times and fewer TBDs. Did a little little little, little manual massaging of a couple things on the tool this afternoon to get it ready for everyone but uh phrasing everybody phrasing but it's, re it's ready to go, <laughs> it's ready to go. <laughs> all right uh, we'll do this listener question first before we really get popping here uh francisco says someone dropped campusano on a mixed 15 team roto league i have wells and herrera how much would you spend on luis thousand dollar budget i'd probably spend 12 13 bucks drop wells I'd go higher. I'd probably go 40, 50 on Camposano. Yeah. And yeah. probably drop a grant agree. Drop Wells. We've, 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 we've discussed Herrera. You, you've been a big Herrera guy for, for months. Um, again, don't know what the playing time will be long-term, but that guy can hit man. So he can keep Herrera drop Wells. I saw tweets about his day. I almost wrote about it last night. Cause I had a random, like almost full off. All I had was first pitch pod yesterday. It was glorious. And uh, so I was like perusing baseball savant. And if you look at, I know again, small sample, but if you look at barrel rates, just barrels in general, you look at so many of these stats, he is just like 97th percentile, 93rd percent. Like it's ridiculous for Yvonne Herrera, but yep. not everybody needs to hear about my love for him. <laughs> it runs deep. Trust it me. It does. People. It does. I've been waiting for this. I thought this would happen like in May or June, but it's happening in April. It's amazing. Um, all right, let's talk schedules again. This is probably the larger portion of our fab discussion because it's kind of an open discussion when we look at it. We'll go team by team here. We'll start with the Arizona Diamondbacks. They got seven games next week. Um, I think I, it's like 
10 to 12 teams have seven games. I could be just speaking out of my rear end. Something like and, that. Yeah, no teams at five. So another, yeah, another busy week, pick. which is awesome. Yep. Bingo. Um, so Arizona's got seven games, Chicago, and then at the Giants. Um, and it sets up really annoyingly, though, because they get four righties and three lefties. So it could be difficult to uh, stream this week. Yeah, and that's, I mean, similar to what we saw last week. The Diamondbacks do have a, a, a couple – Strong side platooners that that can be can be deployed in the right spot in Jock Peterson and Jake McCarthy if you need power or speed respectively, but it's just hard to it's hard to run that out when you've got three or four when it's this even of a split. You, I, I I'd love to see the uh, the Arizona all righty week at some point happen. They they have faced a ton of lefties lately. I think yeah four of their last five games have been against lefties and Jock Peterson and McCarthy have not played. In either, in either of those, um, Blaze Alexander is playing against lefties and yep. against right-handers. So yep. um, I think we, we think we rolled them. He's been hot. Yeah, he's been hot. Uh, the Blaze thing I like, I'm hoping the righty thing sticks because it was really frustrating to start the week. I think he sat versus the first righty, and then it was like a revolving door where he got kept playing, but it was a DH. Then he played the infield as Marte. Like, it was just the whole thing. It worked. He played. It's all that matters. But – Let's just hope it sticks is what I'm trying to say in that regard. You do have on the other side of that platoon, I think Randall Grichuk is mildly interesting. I, I yes. would not recommend starting him for a full week because it is only those three lefties that Arizona faces. But in daily leagues or whatever, uh, Randall Grichuk against lefties is, is The one caveat to I'll throw back, and this is not a homer in me though, but out of the five Giants you get to face, you, you get the four toughest in Webb, Snell, Harrison, and Hicks. I'm like yeah. – Yep. You, you couldn't throw Keaton. And Keaton wins actually decent if you look at stuff plus and you believe in that metric. But it, you like, you'd want his face win is what I'm trying to say out of the whole group. Agreed. All right. Atlanta Braves, the best offense in baseball. Again, they get a fun week. It's at Houston, home against Texas. Five righties on the docket here. Um, none of the pitchers really scare me outside of maybe Eovaldi and then Bradford if you still trust him. Uh, I, I think it's like we just talked about Bradford. I'm sitting the next week. I know, dude. That's that's a, yeah. the exact same thing I was just thinking. Talk about going from the Oakland matchup to the Braves for as good as Bradford has been. That's a that's a tough. So so we did. So like I said, I updated the w, the WRC plus to 2024. Uh, the Braves lineup has been even better than it was last year, and that's without really anything from Ronald Acuna and not much from Matt Olson. The the Braves have the top WRC plus 139 of any team in baseball. Again, 100 is league average. So they're 40% better than the average lineup right now. Uh, Bradford, I agree, is a tough, tough start against Atlanta. Anyone is. Yeah. And there's obviously when it comes to Atlanta, unless you have like Jared Kelnick out there or something, not a whole lot of guys to add up for the week. So it's not a Duval week. Let's put it that way. Yep. Baltimore Orioles, they have a fun week now. You got Minnesota, you got at the Royals, five right-handed pitchers. I think there's this guy named after an animal kind of that hit two home runs on Thursday night. Might be popular this week. Named after an animal. Cowzer. 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 <laughs> you have children, Ryan. Come on. Dude, that's <laughs> bad. Um, God. Colton Cowser. <laughs> they agree. On, our boy, our boy Brendan Tuma was literally just tweeting out cow emojis earlier. I, I didn't see. I didn't. I, I'm trying to. I, like I said, I was focusing on the Masters today. I was not <laughs> looking at cow emojis or thinking that Colton Cowser was named after a cow. Um, but I do admit we had a listener question last week who was our toughest drop of the season. I said Colton Cowser. I did drop him and couple of 15s last week and i'm already regretting that because uh he is playing every day against right-handers ryan o'hearn is also interesting and yes. to get those five is uh is pretty pretty nice for baltimore even though it is you know it's against pablo lopez it's against joe ryan a couple tough righties in there but you still uh you still want to get those baltimore lefties in there yeah um cowser is only 27 percent rostered <laughs> no c's so that's fun and i like the ryan o'hearn shout too that that's a good one as well Boston Red Sox, they get seven games this week. Uh, Cleveland and then at Pittsburgh for three. So four at home against Cleveland, three at Pittsburgh in that Cleveland rotation. Like you said, we got listener questions later. But like Allen's been hit and miss. Bybee's hit and miss. Carrasco's Carrasco. McKenzie's been hit and miss. Um, this could be a very potent week for Boston. Agreed. Um, but it's that similar kind of 
even split between lefty righties and Boston basically has Emmanuel Valdez, Reese McGuire, and David Hamilton as platooners with Connor Wong, Romy Gonzalez, Pablo Reyes. So there's well, Romy Gonzalez has an, a wrist injury in his day to day. X rays were negative. So hopefully that gives David Hamilton some run. We'll see. Yeah. And Hamilton, I mean, we didn't really talk about him last week, but um, very interesting fab spec. He is on the CBS list that we'll get to. We will definitely talk about him. He is of interest to me. When they called up Romy uh, Gonzalez, that disappointed me. But uh, Hamilton is quite intriguing, to say the least. Chicago Cubs, the fight and say is they have another fun one on tap this week. Seven games. They get to play three at the D-backs and then four at home against the Miami Marlins. Who knows what that rotation looks like when we see them at the end of the week. Um, But it's it's a fun week. Decent pitchers, but I don't know. It's it's an interesting uh, Cubs week. Yeah, we don't know what that Miami at the end of that with with puck and weathers as we just talked about. So not totally sure. Um, Thing is with the Cubs, like I feel like everyone is almost roster like Miguel Amaya could be a good week for him I know he's I added him last week and job young gomes he's taking over playing time there Michael Bush has looked really good early on I know we've talked about him a little bit as well so those are those are possible pickups I think even in uh in 12 teamers that uh that could be good and again you want to you want to target those seven game weeks just over time that extra game per week that that matters a ton yeah Bush is a good one they faced a lot of righties this week so you got some love there little tougher, like you said, this next week, but someone to just keep on your radar will probably bring him up multiple times this year based on matchups. Uh, the White Sox, this is one of our first, I think. You know, you, you've said it earlier. We say it many times. Bad teams will have good fantasy options. Here it is. White Sox play six games. Royals avoiding one Cole Reagans at Philadelphia. You get six righties. We already hinted at Gavin Sheets. That seems to be one of the, the big potential pickups for the week. Yeah, I think Gavin Sheets is a is a target. I think we're I think we're officially backing Gavin Sheets as a as a stream this week because it is all right handers. Um, I don't know. There's Zach Wheeler, Turnbull, Nola. Like that's not the easiest end of the week. Your boy, Cy Singer. That's right, Brady Singer, the second that, up man. there. That's right. So that's right. I'm, I'm surprised I haven't heard that. You know that rubbed that one in my face yet. But he, Brady Singer has looked pretty good. I will admit. First few starts. So. A few starts. Um, like there's certain things I'll rub, like pitchers and hitters. I will rub in your face, but uh, Brady Singer needs to do more than three outings to get me to 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 start waving the flag. <laughs> we'll agree because that flag might 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 come back yeah. come back but, at you. I'm very aware of what he can do to damage things. Yes. All right. Uh, let's go to Cincinnati Reds now. They got six games this week. They kick it off with uh, what is that? It's a uh, L.A. A Miller. Oh, it's three, three Seattle. at Seattle, three at, at home Seattle. against the Angels. Okay, I was like confused yeah. for a second. Uh, three and three. Uh, the end. The end of the week looks very good. Yes. <laughs> Although, I mean, Tyler Anderson's look look decent. We will talk about him. He's a, he's another CBS yeah, riser. We, will, we and will talk about him. I I think a decent pickup. You sound you sound suspicious. I but... picked him up last week. Okay. I'm not going to throw him in Great American Small Park. Yeah, it's good. It's probably probably a good thing. Um, the, the skills look really good for Tyler Anderson, but again, it's been two or three starts. Um, I don't know what to think. I, is George Kirby and still fear in you right now? Logan Gilbert did look good his most recent start, but Seattle uh, in general, I have been kind of besmirching their offense lately, but yes. the rotation hasn't been that great either outside of, uh, I mean, Gilbert's pitched decently, but it's been tough. Yeah, it's just potentially for that weekend in Great American, you're going to get three left-handed pitchers. Or two, two out of three we lefties. So if like you're in a deep format, yeah. Stuart yeah. Fairchild will play two out of three. Um, like he's not great, great, but he's definitely a, a stream option for the back end of the week in Great American. That would be the main one I would look at right now. No, like um, Santiago is Espinal. I don't, I don't even know if he's good enough in deep leagues though. Yeah, he's been play. playing a lot. Yeah, bats are there like you're saying, but I think Fairchild would be the one I'd be looking at. It doesn't make you all. It, it's only deep formats, twelves. I wouldn't really go there. Yeah, agreed. All right, uh, next one on the dock here, the Cleveland Guardians. Somehow have one of the best offenses in baseball. They don't strike out a lot. They're pesky little bunch, those guys. And if you, you guys missed it on a Wednesday, it was uh, sibling day, and their brother Naylor's both went to Ding Dong City. It was glorious. Um, seven games on the week for the Guardians. They get uh, three at Boston and then four at home against the wonderful, 
Oakland Athletics. So have fun, boys. Yeah, um, I think like again, just to throw out some names. I think Will Brennan's an interesting stream. I like that. Doesn't whiff a ton. Eighteen percent strikeout rate so far. Again, just thirty nine plate appearances. Not a lot of power, but I think Will Brennan swipes two three bags this week. I don't think that's a that's a hot take. I think uh, I think he's going to play probably all those six games against righties and. Like yes, the Boston rotation has looked has looked pretty good so far, but that back half against Oakland is going to be awesome. So um, and I don't even know if that Criswell dude pitches. I think he pitched today and got nuked. Yeah. Uh, so who knows? But I mean, like his replacement isn't going to be any better. So um, I like I like Will Brennan as a um, as kind of a rental for this year or for this week. I like that. That's a really strong one in my opinion. I agree completely. Colorado Rockies they got six games on the schedule. Three at Philadelphia, three at home against Seattle. Um, Hancock, who you can just nuke to the sun. Castillo struggled. <laughs> Kirby struggled. Um, still, it's like it's the Rockies, man. Yeah, uh, and and we see with the eighty-two WRC plus, which is among the handful of worst teams in baseball. Um, it 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 hasn't been great. I don't know. Like that's a that's a tough start to the week at Philadelphia. Any kind of road Rocky is tough, and then. I don't know. I still, yes, Hancock, but I still think Castillo and Kirby are, are good. I'm not panicking with either of those two guys. So yeah. um, I don't I don't think you're starting many Rockies this week. Like maybe Charlie Blackman just because Blackman he's will. like yeah. leading off every day no matter what. Yep. But outside of that, I like Tovar McMahon, you know, whatever. But the main Owen guys Jones, for sure. Like, yeah, the main guys are still rolling out there. But like, like you know. I was going to mention like Elias or Montero. Uh, no. I like him versus lefties, but it's not in it's it's Sanchez and Suarez. Uh, right. still hittable. Maybe Montero starts playing versus righties, which would be great, but I haven't seen enough yet. Toglia usually gets it, so Toglia would be your weekend guy, not looking to play that versus Seattle. Britton Doyle would be a guy that you could probably put out there, but yeah, I'm just gonna name names because people will as well. But uh, the moral of the story is probably not this week, folks. Agreed. Detroit Tigers, you got seven games for the Tigers this week. Four at home against the Texas Rangers, uh, one being Cody Bradford, and then three at the Minnesota Twins over Ober Paddock. Yeah. Um, I'll look it up. I got it right here. Uh, that's not right. No, Maybe Minnesota's Joe, Joe, Joe Ryan. Well, that's legit. It's Joe Ryan, Ober, and then either Varland or Paddock. That's up in the air still, it looks like. Either way, Varland's, yeah. Varland has looked pretty bad um ready every week for detroit so just looking at like a probably already taken but parker meadows or Kerry carpenter i'm sure those has been so bad so far so bad no but he is leading off like every day i so and victor scott hits nine they have almost the same stat line so 31 percent k rate hitting 080 yeah so worse than victor scott like i've almost dropped parker meadows in 12 team leagues i know is that bad yeah it's brutal one barrel not good. Not no. good. You're right. Yeah. Um, don't pick up Parker Because <laughs> yeah. the schedule can only go so far. Like yes. you, have, you also have to be semi productive. Productive. Yeah, it's it's a rough go there for Mr. Mr. Meadows. Um Houston Astros, they've been crushing it at the plate. They have six games this week. They get uh three at home against Atlanta and then three at the Nationals. Obviously, um, Winans will not pitch game two. It's, he's still on the books technically for game two, but we'll have to wait and see who gets that one. Regardless, not too concerned with who gets called up in that. Right. Um, should be a fun week potentially for one of the best offenses in baseball. Same with uh, a Don at the end. I don't know if that if that yeah, happens. He got sent back got, down. Got sent yeah, back down. Right. But again, it's again uh, with this with this tool, like we're trying to project next Sunday starter, like ten yeah. days from now. It's whoever gets called up in Adon's place is going to be like Adon. So yeah, yeah. you don't, you don't want to be, you don't want to be in a Don. If you take, if you take away from, <laughs> from this episode, Houston does have the softest strikeout minus opposing strikeout minus walk rate of any team uh, coming up this week. It's just a shame because most Astros are already yeah. rostered. Like maybe Jake Myers, they got four righties. Myers. I, I, yeah, I would consider Myers with the four righties. He does play every day and he's reasonably productive. Yeah, that'd be like the only guy that would stand out in that scenario. Kansas City Royals just won seven straight oh. at home. 
this team's turning into a little – it's fun. They did this a few years back when they went young and it finally paid off. They're starting to do it again right now. I'm not saying they're going to win the World Series, but you can kind of see the fun building in Kansas City. And uh, they get six games this week. They get three at the White Sox, three at home versus Baltimore, five right-handed hitters. So uh, who's any, who are you looking at this week? So off the top of my head, most of the important guys are taken outside of like Kyle Isbell. Yeah, Isbell's really the only one, like Adam Frazier, but I'm, I I can't sit here recommend Adam Frazier. Yeah. Um, Kyle Isbell, even though Isbell is hitting ninth, even against righties, uh, I believe stole a bag this week. I have him yes, he has. starting in a couple 15-teamers, so I will probably keep that train going for Kyle Isbell because that's a that's a really sweet schedule. I mean, especially the front half. Anytime you're facing the Whites, I mean, Soroka, Fetty, Flexen, like, are you, are you kidding me? They do get Corbin Burns, but outside of that, it's – it's pretty sweet for Kansas City. Yes, as Kevin Hastings says, it's so Hastings beautiful. Yeah. yeah, Bobby yeah, Witt. Bobby Witt's good for about he doubled three homers. And, yes, he did. Yes, he did. And it it hurts me to my core as drafting Spencer Strider instead of Bobby Witt. The Italian breakfast is waking up. It's uh, it's fun over there right now. MJ Melendez starting to hit. Yes, God, that's great. Because like I was looking at one of my rosters, like most people don't care. I think I have three Royals starting on one team right now. And that, if you would have said that on in March, you'd be like, "What are you doing?" But it's looking pretty darn good right now. Pretty, Michael Gar- good. Our, our our collective, I know Michael Garcia in our shares episode was very high up on our lists. Yep. He has been, he has been. I know he's only hitting two oh eight, but like the strikeouts have the strikeouts look good. Three homers, three steals. He's been. He's been pretty good and did some did some damage on Thursday as well. Done some major damage on Thursday. Uh, do you notice who the uh, closer now is in Kansas City by chance? The general. Yes, my most rostered player in the NFC this year. That's right, general. James MacArthur. That is, and that he is looks good. he looks fantastic. Yes. Um, where is he at? Eighteen percent swinging strike rate. And a 28% ball rate. We'll get into what some of those mean, but I just pulled up the CBS list, and MacArthur is on there with elite, elite skills, missing bats, throwing strikes, getting Ks, and not walking anyone. So he looks Beautiful. good. Beautiful. All right, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Seven games this week. They get the Tampa Bay Rays in Tampa for four. Then they go to Cincinnati for three. So they're on the road all week, finishing with three in Great American Small Park. Uh, Ladolo, Ashcraft, and Mon- Montas on that one. Um, man, it's just tough with the Angels. <laughs> it is. The mascot's playing. Where's though. the mascot, man? The He's mascot's playing. playing. They only got two lefties this week, but mascot's been in yep. pretty much, I don't say week. every day, but all week over the week. last five against all righties. Yep. So let's keep that going. Like In all seriousness, I would – like I wouldn't seek out to pick up Rangifo if he's, he's been cut. He's but like, rostered still in eighty three percent of OCs. Like people aren't dropping him. Yeah. There's still the conversation. I think we've had many people are probably having in their head. Like you just can't do it if you can hold him. Like the Aaron Hicks experiment starting to. He yes. Aaron Hicks has DH twice the last six games and hasn't played in the field. Um, Nolan Chanel's struggling a ton. It's bad. He's struggling. So the 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 path for Rangifo as as expected is starting to. Starting to starting to roll there, um, and and a great a great schedule for the Angels, I think, uh, yeah, especially sure. that back half. I don't know what Ladola will look like coming back. Ashcraft's been decent. We'll talk about him a little bit later, but anytime you get those three in small park, it's it's great and seven overall. Yep, completely agree. Los Angeles Dodgers they get six this week, all at home in L.A. They have the Nationals for three, the Mets for three, and my oh my. That is a great looking set of pitchers to face. Yep. Yep. Problem is you can't really take advantage of it. Nope. Nope. So. Not on the waiver wire. You can't. That's for sure. Yeah. So that's what it is. Miami Marlins, the worst offense in baseball. They have seven games this week. They get the Giants at home for three and then go to Wrigley for four, facing the future NL Cy Young Award winner in Monica on Thursday. So, um, man, the Marlins, five righties for the week, but. Again, similar to some other teams, there's not a whole lot to attack here. Yeah, like you could maybe look. Uh, Jesus Sanchez probably rostered. Like if you're in, if you're in deep leagues, Nick Gordon maybe, who I've I've had love for in previous seasons. Um, biggest takeaway from that is yes, this Miami offense a a 60 WRC plus, which is you know again 100 to the league average. 
60 is awful. No other team is below 80. That's how bad Miami has been. And so, like, earlier you talked about Puck moving to the bullpen, like, <laughs> who even pitch in leverage spots. Yes, that's true. That's a great it's, point. Uh, uh, Tanner Scott finally got his first save the other night. He did, yeah, um, finally. Speaking of Sanchez and Gordon, the two you mentioned, both are 0% rostered, no Cs. So. And, like, I, that's, yeah, I don't. No, I, I you wouldn't be shocked if San, he's got streaky guy, but yeah, the Marlins aren't the people I'm looking to search out for uh, this type of situation. I wouldn't think Sanchez would be that low, but I guess I was surprised too. I expected like maybe like fifteen percent. Yeah, like that. he's hitting nope. one sixty with no home runs, so yeah. he's just with the rest of the team struggling. Yeah. Milwaukee Brewers, they're not struggling, and they have a very nice schedule this week. They have six games. They get the Padres at home for three, and then go to St. Louis for three. All right-handed pitching. Uh, this this is a fun week if you already have these guys rostered because I don't think there's a ton of left-handed bats to target with Milwaukee. No, uh, Bryce Terang is has has graduated. Yes, he's right. rostered. Um, Oliver Dunn. Oliver Dunn is a name that I'll I'll throw out there. He is on the CBS grid at what's he at? He's fifteen percent rostered in CBS league. So I think Oliver Dunn in in some formats. I think he's leading off. Against uh, righties, usually yes. So that's 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 an interesting pickup if you didn't already grab him last week, Bubba. I think you grabbed him. I grabbed him in a few leagues. So. Yeah, I grabbed him a few last week. He's thirty six percent rostered in those right now. I expect that, and but he struggled this week. So I'm curious to see how many because the matchups dictate he'll play six games next week. So I'm with you, hundred percent. He's the kind of guy to target. Curious to see how many people will based on his poor week, but. Great set of matchups like Musgrove's been bad, Cease has been good, King's been okay, Gibson is Gibson, Mikolas is Mikolas, Sonny Gray has been good. So you get at least three really good matchups and a couple you wouldn't be surprised if a goofiness took place. So a good spot there for Milwaukee. Minnesota Twins, they get six games on tap. They have three at the the Baltimore Orioles and three at home against the Detroit Tigers, five righties to target. Too bad Matt Waller stinks. Yeah, that's a problem. Um, you do like to see Minnesota with that split because the lefty righty split because they are so platoon happy. Edward Julian is going to play a ton and yep. probably hit a ton. Um, I wish Max wish I could say the same for Max Kepler, who was IL'd shortly after Locke this week. Um, what other what other lefties on the Twins? Kirilov. Kirilov. I love Kirilov. Picked him up everywhere last week. Get in on that train. You don't want any twins righties this week. Like, and I'll admit I was I was wrong on Kyle Farmer. I thought with the Royce Lewis injury, Farmer would play more than he has, but it's been very sporadic. Austin Martin, we both kind of warned against. Um, uh, really I, I guess he's played the last three games, but I don't know how much he plays against a uh, righty heavy week. Yep, it's pretty much if you can get Kirilov still. If you want to roll the dice and Walner, go for it, but he's even sitting versus righties. It's been a rough go for him. Yeah. New York Mets, they get six games. They get three at home versus Pittsburgh, three on the road against the Dodgers, um, and it's split 3-3. Three, three, so, yeah. Um, yeah, and it's uh, – get Jared Jones and Tyler Glass now is two of your six. Not great. Tough one. Tough one for uh, tough one for the Pirates. Uh, for or the not Mets. the Pirates. For for the the, yeah, for the Mets. Uh, New York Yankees, they get six this week, three at Toronto, three at home against Tampa Bay, five righties. Um, this could be a spot to potentially target uh, a couple guys if they are available. I will mention a brewer that I forgot right now. Who? Jake Bowers. Oh, God. What is this, 2018 again? He's playing pretty much either DH or first base for every righty. I just thought of that when we went to the Yankees because Bauer used to be a Yankee. So since you're going to make fun of me, I'll bring it up. He is only hitting a buck 54. That's fine. He's hitting two out of his last three games, a couple doubles. Deeper leagues, I would. I'd, I'd rather do that than Matt Wolner. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. So, back to your back to the Yankees. What do you What are you thinking here? There's not much here uh, because it is righty heavy. The Yankees don't really have a lot of good lefty bats that are available, and the schedule is like. I mean, the schedule is tough. Kikuchi's been good. Bassett's good. Gossman, you know, we'll see. Maybe, hopefully. Yeah, for your sake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And mine, I have. I've got no, some time. We so we transferred fun. Gossman ownership for me to you before the yeah. He's my boy now, yes. My boy now, but that happens a lot. Like that that's a that's a tough, it's a tough stretch for Yankee bats. Yep, very very much so. 
Oakland Athletics is a great spot for pitchers to target. But when we talk hitting, they got six games, three at home against St. Louis, three at the Cleveland Guardians, um, and it's three lefties and three righties, and it's the Oakland Athletics. Agreed. I think the analysis can can stop there. Like I said before, Seth Brown, Lawrence Butler in righty heavy weeks, but this doesn't look like one of those for the A's. Yeah. Philadelphia Phillies, they get six games this week, three at home against Colorado, three at home against the White Sox, four righties, and some of the best pitching matchups to target on the face of the planet. Yeah, this one's pretty green. This one's pretty green. So so yeah, go 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 Phils. Anytime you get, I mean, Colorado, Chicago, like. Come on. Brandon so Marsh, in there everybody. twice. I don't know why. I don't know who that last one yeah, is. But it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It really it's doesn't a matter. Bum. Um, Brandon Marsh is heating up, folks. He's playing pretty much every day. Yep. He's only 40% rostered. I'd be jumping all over that one if you want to stream someone this week. And he'll probably have more viability than you think throughout the season. So agreed. Agreed. He's a guy I would look to. Yeah, with Merrifield's on a lot of waiver wires. I, I, I was just that's trigger. the name I was just I was looking at the roster. Like Whit Merrifield has played twice, started yeah. twice in the last six games. And you would think he probably not only plays against lefties, but that's probably where he's getting most of his starts. And so like Whit Merrifield should be on waiver wires right now. It's just not playing enough. It's just one of those names that I always see. I'm like, wow. This is where we're, it can make sense, but it's like, wow, that's where we are now. Yep. Times have gotten tough in this scenario. But, yeah, Brandon Marsh is pretty much the main dude uh, this week when it comes to the fight and fills. Pittsburgh Pirates, they've been swinging it pretty well. they got six games this week, three at the New York Mets, three at uh, home against the Boston Red Sox, five right-handed pitchers to face this week. Is this a uh, rowdy week? It's a rowdy week. Yes. It's a rowdy week. Let's go. It's always yeah. a rowdy week, but uh... – but Rowdy Telez week this week. I, yeah, Rowdy's playing every day against and hitting sixth against right-handed pitching. So I like that. Captain Jack, Captain your boy, Jack, he's probably Thank already God. he's probably mostly rostered. But uh, but yeah, if you need a corner or you have a struggling corner or whatever, uh, I think Rowdy Telez is you know not just because of the righty matchup, but it's pretty juicy overall. I mean, the the Boston rotation has been pretty good and and. You know, Crawford, Whitlock, Bayo have been solid, but I like Rowdy this week. Pittsburgh, yeah. 110 WRC plus as yeah, a team. Pretty good. Imagine that. And I will mention again, like we mentioned last week, Michael A. Taylor still available everywhere, still playing pretty much every yeah. single day. Like yeah, but he was hurt. Day. He was hurt the beginning half of the week or something. Yeah, he then he's back. He's in, he was hit, he hit like fifth, I think, uh, fifth or sixth on Thursday. Like, yeah, right, I was like, getting a little nervous because he didn't play. I didn't play Monday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, but it came out he was hurt. So it was weird though. Like he's hitting ninth forever, comes back from injury, and he's hitting fifth or sixth now. It's like okay, interesting move. Uh, I will say this much though, just something to keep an eye on. Probably not to roster with Taylor back. Edward Oliveras played while he was out and was dropping bombs. Like yeah. he looked real good. So something to continue to monitor there in Pittsburgh. Five barrels and thirty plate appearances for Edward Oliveras. Three, three good. bombs on those five barrels. That's, that's pretty solid. Imagine if the guy played every day. Imagine, imagine what a world. Um, San Diego Padres. They have a fun one this week. Six games on tap. Three at Milwaukee. Three at home against Toronto. Um, the Milwaukee first. It's a weird, weird one because Miley's just a, annoying. Like doesn't get blown up. Doesn't cr- cruise. Peralta's Peralta. And then you mentioned Bassett and Barrios. I don't know. Uh, San Diego's got a tough one on tap. Five righties, though. Yeah, five righties. So I look at the lefties like Jackson Merrill, Tyler Wade. Um, I'm not sure Merrill's ownership percentage. But um, speaking of San Diego, just real quick, that Manny Machado bit this week was oh, interesting. You, you like that news? No. <laughs> no, I hated it. Because <laughs> we I don't think we knew that. And maybe we should have known, but we're not doctors. But Manny Machado, uh, what I'm alluding to is basically doctors said he won't be 100% until 2025. 2025. So that's good to know in April. But it, what the, what they're referring to, though, to take a step back on this more is fielding. Fielding. Like he's, yeah. he can yeah. swing fine. So he might DH more than people thought. But then that same day after that report came out, Machado was taking ground balls and making his first throws from third to first since the injury. And the Padres said they're still expecting him to start playing third base at the end of April. So yeah. I, just, I, he just won't be like an everyday third baseman. In my head, I'm just like, can you play 20 so you're third base eligible next year? <laughs> oh, yeah, I keep uh... like, don't go Bryce Harper and be Util only for a year. 
That's what I'm. That's what I was more concerned about when I read that. Not that he was not going to play the whole season. He has struggled. Machado, Machado has been. It's okay. He'll play the Giants pretty soon. And he'll they'll wake him up. That's what he does. Speaking of the Giants, they have seven games this week. They get uh, three at Miami, and then a four game divisional series at home against the Arizona Diamondbacks. And um, yeah, four left. It's a nice schedule, right? man. If you like Austin Slater. Especially early in the week, you're, you're looking pretty right now. Yeah, Slater. Well, any maybe other... not. Edward Cabrera should have one of those starts. To That's true. We don't there. know whether. Yeah, what the. Yeah, yeah we don't know what the puck is going to happen there, but. Well played. Um, well played. Slater Wilmer. What about your boy Wilmer Flores? Wilmer, who I've been dropping because he doesn't. He literally is in a hardcore platoon with Lamont Wade right now, which is frustrating because just he can't hit the broadside of a barn. But um, yeah, Wilmer, we get some love. Austin Slater, we get some love. Um, mainly in the first half of the week because the back half, it's um, Gallon, Kelly, Henry on the weekend. So you get one lefty on the weekend. And then you have Gallon and Merrill Kelly who pitched pretty good. Yep. Yep. All so right. just keep that in mind. First half streamers for the Giants. Seattle Mariners, they have six games. They get three at home against the Cincinnati Reds and then three in wonderful Colorado. So uh, four righties on tap. I don't know. The Seattle offense has just been dreadful, though. I know it's been it's been it's been really bad, and the numbers bear that out. At eighty W R C plus, which is tied for worst in baseball, non Miami division. If there's a week that Seattle's going to wake up, it's got to be this one. Um, I mean, Hunter Green's been he's been good lately, but you never know what you're going to get there. And then at Colorado, it's just beautiful. So Mariners are available on your yes. uh, on your wires. I know we talked about like Mitch Garver last week. Um, like I said, if there's going to be a time where this turns around. I think it's got to start happening this week. Like a fun one because in Colorado, it's two righties, one lefty. Dominic Canzone would be a yeah. fun one to take a target at. There'll be other guys like Luke Rayleigh's probably out there, and Josh Rojas. But the main guy I would look at is Dominic Canzone. For me. I like that. I like that. St. Louis Cardinals, another team that's struggling tremendously on the offensive side of things. They get six games, and this might help at least three to start the week in Oakland. Three at home against the Milwaukee Brewers, and they avoid Peralta. If there's ever a get right week, these six pitchers they're about to face could be that. I was going to say on on the schedule tool here, it's pretty bright green outside of Houston. St. Louis has the softest uh, schedule of any team, and you look at the starters and you quickly realize why. So, yep. um, I don't know. Well, there's there's some the, the problem with St. Louis is like there's just some unknowns around the lineup right now. Like he's, we talked about with New Park coming back and what Wilson's going to do and that sort of thing. But um, it's it's a, it's a great week for Cardinals bats. Tampa Bay Rays they get a seven game series on um, tap this week. Four at home against the Angels, and then three in the Bronx first the Yankees. Um, yeah, Detmers has been really good. Um, the Angels start to the week could be pretty sweet. And it's yeah, but it's pretty split. So I yeah, and I they know. will platoon heavy, like you said. So they will platoon a little. I mean, a little less so than like most years, but with Brandon Lau out, I think they're going to start getting back into that platoon mode. So um, I just hope Jose Caballero keeps playing yep. every day. Keep doing it, big man. He awesome. should. He should. Should. Uh, a few more teams here. Texas Rangers, one of the better offenses in baseball. They get seven games this week. They get the Detroit Tigers in Detroit for four. Then at Atlanta for three, six right-handed bats in that mix. Uh, I don't know what's really available, though, so what are you looking at here? Uh, check for Jared Walsh and uh, Josh H. Smith. Don't want to leave out the H. Don't want to. That'd be, that'd be rude. Those guys uh, those guys are playing every day against righties, and I know Nathaniel Lowe is working his way back, which would – which would ding Jared Walsh is playing time. Yeah, I think it will another week or so. Yeah, away. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think we need to worry about that yet. Uh, Jared Walsh had started hot. I didn't check how he did this week, but um, it does seem like Josh H. Smith is yes. the third baseman against right-handed pitching, which I Shocking. which wasn't the case. I wish it was Ezekiel Duran, but Duran is not playing against right-handed pitching, so. Um, you kind of need to go with what the Rangers are telling you. So I think this week with, with those six righties against Texas, I think Smith and, um, and Walsh, Walsh are, are, yeah. are, are good streams. That's a good point. Don't I was prepping my fab article for my sub stack. I did put Walsh and Smith both down because they're basically unrostered in the NFBC. So 
and two it's good a good options. Lineup. Like it's just uh, you know, get on base, you score. If you get a hit, there's usually and, guys on. And you got good matchups too. So we'll see how that plays out. Toronto Blue Jays. They get six games this week. Three at home against New York. Three at the Padres. Five right-handed bats on tap. Um, the offense has not been great for Toronto, but maybe there's a window here. What are we looking at? Yeah, maybe like some Kevin Biggio. And we did but... that's last week too. He's actually hitting it well. Though. He's actually yeah. hitting well. Like he's he's hitting two ninety four. Yeah, with, with the K rate the K rate's up to thirty percent. One barrel. Like the skills are just kind of mediocre. But but Kevin Biggio is going to play. We do have Joe Rico in the chat. Uh, this was from earlier. Speaking of the Blue Jays, resident Blue Jay fan. Saying uh, Kevin Gossman better be okay. Yeah, he's got a so special healthy. jersey, so he does. That's right. Yep. That's right. So, uh, but no, for Toronto, like I, uh, the schedule's marginal, but uh, maybe some Kevin Biggio if you're if you're desperate. Nationals wrap things up here. Six games, three at the Dodgers, three at home against Houston. All right-handed pitching. Glass now. Bobby Miller, Yamamoto to start the week. Renell Blanco, Christian Javier, and I doubt Spaghetti throws. But we'll see. Um, it's like six righties is awesome, but not those six righties, probably. I know. I, I don't know what to think about Bobby Miller and Yamamoto right That's now. That's fair. But... Yamamoto's last two starts been really good. I wrote him yeah, up for yeah, daily. you're right. That's a good. I wrote call. him up for daily matchups for Friday, and I was really actually impressed with his last two starts. It's a good call. I like it. Um, Eddie Eagle. Eddie Eagle Eddie and Luis Rosario? Garcia and Luis Garcia are the two dudes. But I, I and twelves. I don't know. 15. Look at look at Luis Garcia though. He's a dude that I'm interested in in general because he's playing every day. If you look at his quality of contact metrics, like they're actually really really good. It's small sample. A lot of things can change, obviously. Yeah. But his like yeah. his barrel, barrel rate and hard hit rates like yeah. it's way up for like uh, six barrels, no home runs. Like his hard hit rate's fifty six percent. He's probably overachieving because he has a fifty six percent ground ball rate. But when you're hitting the ball that hard, we talked about it last Tuesday, like good things should eventually happen if you can continue to do it. That makes Luis Garcia's barrel rate even more impressive if he's hitting the ball on the yes. ground that that often. Um, and he has sacrificed a little bit. I know we're, we're splitting hairs here with a 32 plate appearance sample, but Luis Garcia, again, we're just trying to find, we're trying to find something um, that we can kind of jump on these first few weeks. The K rate's still below 20%. So he's given back a little bit in strikeouts. He's a good contact hitter no matter what. But if you if you can hold a sub twenty K rate with the amount of power that Luis Garcia is showing, um, I like that. I like yeah, that. I think he's got viability yep. past this week. Is yep. Hope, hopefully, he's, he's interesting. All right, that wraps up the schedule portion of the show. Let's talk CVS, my friend. Most uh, added players over the last week. Most added players over the last week. Got a separate little grid for that. On the hitter side, we've got their percentages, and we'll just kind of talk through some of the guys that are interesting to us. Um, filtered it out, so this is anyone CBS below 50% rostered, which I think it's a good kind of sampling of different guys for different types of leagues because there are a few risers that are like below 20% that I think could be 15-team viable even. Um and then I've got the K rate, barrel rate, and stolen base attempt rate. That's what that SBA is, trying to get a gauge for each average power and speed skill that each player has shown throughout this season. All right, then I will kick us off here. Kirloff, Caballero, Blackman are up top. We talked about all three of them last week. Pretty sure we're still in on all three, yes? Agreed. Um, we just talked about Oliver Dunn, who does get the righty-heavy week. But like you said, kind of slowed down a little bit this past week. But, um, yeah, the skills don't look that great. 30% strikeout rate and 5% barrel rate for Oliver Dunn. But he runs. But he runs. But he runs. So. The Brewers run a lot, so that's a plus. And he's going to – and should, again, should lead off in a in a big week against righties. So should get a, a good number of plate appearances, and plate appearances are king. So I still I still like Oliver Dunn in leagues where he's available. There's Brandon Marsh. Mentioned him earlier as a stream and probably a long-term asset. He's being added in 13% of leagues here. Strikeout rate's rough, but uh, he had a, he had his fourth home run on Thursday. He's oh. he's doing his thing, man. I've always been a Marsh fan. Heston Kirstad's a riser up from 17% to 30%. We touched on Kirstad. I think we had a listener question on him last week. I think you're just kind of waiting for the call-up, but 
still waiting for an injury, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. Because it's a pretty crowded outfield in Baltimore, but uh, but has been hitting the hell out of the ball in the minors. So Kirstad, um, I don't know. He's interesting, but I'm not picking him up yet. Yeah, I've never been a Beatty guy. People are pretty optimistic on him. So if you are, the floor is yours, but otherwise I'm moving on. Um, it's interesting to see the K rate drop a little bit. And Beatty does have some prospect pedigree, as they say. Yes. Um, so I, I don't think that this is kind of like the anti Beatty profile that we've seen so far this year, which is kind of marginal power and good strikeouts. I think that's just like early season flukiness. So um, I'm with you. Jose Siri talked about him recently, still out there in a lot of league strikes out a ton, but man, he's running like crazy and he'll hit you 20 plus homers. So there's something there for sure. Yep. Jerickson uh, Profar. What do you think about him? I put him on my list to write up tomorrow night for my uh, deal. He hit a couple home runs this week. I think one was a grand slam. Maybe he's driven in 10 runs this year to go with like two or three home runs. We've seen him do this in the past. He goes streaking like this. Padres offense is clicking. He's a hundred percent a fifteen team league guy with twelve team viability for streaming. Yeah, I'm a little less optimistic that the Babips three eighty two, which is just massive. Um, and Jerickson Profar has hit, I believe, one barrel all year, fifty three plate appearances. So, um, I don't know. He, he is. I mean, to your point about getting like you know those ten RBI and that sort of thing. Like he is playing every day, hitting fifth in, in Padres lineup, and that does that does matter in deeper leagues. But I in fifteens, I'd, I'd be okay with it. In twelves, I don't know if I'd go pro far. I just I don't see the I don't see the skill there. Yep, you got Reese McGuire, Michael Bush. We talked about who I do like when there's righties on the bump. There's Jared Walsh, who you hit on, and I think is a great pickup this week. Um, Blaze Alexander, and then can you read the next guy's name real quick? We got Yvonne Herrera. Oh, I thought you were skipping ahead to uh Colton no. Kowser. No, 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 not Moose or <laughs> um, edit that out, please. Um, Yvonne Herrera, you do the, you do the production of this gig, so <laughs> uh, Yvonne, Yvonne Herrera, folks, make it happen, please. Make it at 15% K rate, 15%, and yeah. he crushes baseballs. Pretty sweet. But, I mean, realistically, if Wilson Contreras, I mean, he... I think Herrera plays at least four days a week between DH and catcher. You, you think they DH him enough to... It's, this is what happened last year when Contreras started getting banged up. Uh, Kisner played like 105 games, I think, last year or something. Okay. Yeah, like no, this, that's a good it, point. That's a good this point. This is where Herrera... Like, this is one reason why I liked him so much even going into the season was they want Wilson's at bat in the lineup, so a lot of DH at bats are coming up. What about one catcher leagues? Does Herrera no, elevate no. to that? I don't think so either. No, he, he does but. not. There's too many full time catchers and one catchers. He's a he's strictly a two catcher. I'd say twelve team and deeper, a hundred percent worthy in a fifteen. But agreed. I, if if twelves, you might have other options that are playing more often. I'm, I'll, I'll let you slide on that one, but don't be surprised if he starts whipping your second catcher's butt in the stats column. Yeah, uh, Cowser, we talked about. I think that's definitely a pickup for the week. Uh, Michael Taylor, Bladez, your boy. Yeah, I had a little, 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 little. He's been streaky. Tough week for, uh, I guess, my boy. He's my boy. I didn't know that. Um, what's the What's the Oakland schedule again? Doesn't Flip matter. That one. Does it matter? No, it's not that great either. Um, yeah, fifteen team streamer, JJ Blade. I guess that lineup's just so bad, and the park and everything about the A's. So. Yep, everything about them. Uh, you got our CN, Nelson Velasquez. I'm surprised Velasquez is that low rostered. Your boy Josh Smith, or you know, streamer Josh for the H. week, Josh Smith. Josh H. Smith, I apologize. Yep. Um, and then there's David Hamilton. And I just wanted to bring him up because the dude is a power speed guy in the minors. We saw 17 homers and 57 steals at AAA last year. 12 homers and 70 steals at AA the year before. He's already got a homer and a steal this year. If Romy continues to stay hurt, it's Hamilton's job. But that's a whole big if is the problem. Yeah, uh, no, you covered it well. Founding father, David Hamilton. Did he Homer. Sign, is he on the $20 bill? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> there is a Hamilton. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> did, did Aaron Burr shoot this man? Sorry. <laughs> um, all right, you got me going on history. I love history. Any other hitters? You got Fry, Doyle, Oliver, Sheets. Sheets, I know we like a lot this week. Yeah, it's, Gavin, Gavin, it's a Gavin Sheets week. I think it's a Gavin Sheets week. Um, Oliveris is interesting, but I don't. I still don't. 
there's some type of unwritten rule in Major League Baseball that Edward Olivares cannot play every day. Yep. Um, so yeah, I think I think we leave it off at at Gavin Sheets. I think I think I think that's a strong stream this week. All right, pitching side of things, Javier Assad continues to get the job done. The strikeout rates actually increased this year, which shocks me because he was a massive pitch to contact guy last year. I still don't trust him. Like you look at that swinging strike rate of eight percent, but he did this last year and I used him a lot last year. I don't know why I'm not trusting him this year, but here we are. Javier Facade um, Ooh, does get coming with it tonight. Yeah. Does get does get Miami. That helps. That Sweet. does help. That's and, usually the uh, ones that blow up in our face, but that helps. I guess, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just been eleven innings, but a nineteen percent K to walk is is pretty good for Assad. Just not getting any whiffs. I just don't buy. I just I don't know. Low strikeout guys just scare the hell out of me. Well, this next guy's got a ten percent K to walk. So tell me why you like Tyler Anderson. Because it's the, what I call, what we call at Baseball HQ, the sub indicators. So while the strikeouts and the walks haven't been there, the underlying whiffs have been there. 16% swing strike rate for Tyler Anderson. That is awesome. Uh, league average on that for starting pitchers is down near like 11%. And Tyler Anderson's throwing strikes. 28% ball rate. League average on that is 36%. So while the, while the K to walk is admittedly below average, um, the sub indicators, the per pitch stuff, which I, especially this early in the season, I really tend to hone in on look really good for Tyler Anderson. I, I don't know what to do with him long term. Like this is a guy who was really good two years ago with the Dodgers and then just forgot how to pitch last year and maybe is relearning. I don't know how that really works, but, um, I think you ride him while he's hot. And it, again, the sub indicators look really good. What the matchup is. What is the matchup? I got it right here. Angel at Cincinnati. Oh, so that's fantastic. Great American. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so Baltimore maybe, the following uh, week. Baltimore the following week. Um, I don't know. But I mean, you're gonna have to roll with them in certain yeah. leagues just because so many pitcher injuries. This is and I like him more than Assad. I like Tyler Anderson more than I mean, talk about Paul Blackburn next. Like, I'm not going there. So yeah, he continues to get the job done. We'll see how he does this weekend. Um, he pitches on Friday, actually. So that'll be yeah. interesting to see how. Blackburn does, but yeah, I picked up Tyler Anderson versus two step. Then I plan on dropping him because he's not facing Cincinnati in my lineup. Yeah. Um, but I get what you're saying. I just wish there were strikeouts. It's pretty depressing on that front. Uh, Blackburn, I even think we even talked about him last week. He's been very popular. James MacArthur, the new closer of Kansas City. You were talking about how filthy he is. He's yep. getting added everywhere finally. Yep. Um, Graham Ashcraft is next. And I can't, I can't do it. I can. I can. This is the new Ashcraft, man. All right. He's new one pitch. letter away. He's he's one letter away from proving you something else. <laughs> this is the new, it's the new Ashcraft. We got he, he's he's hasn't ditched his cutter, but he Ashcraft threw his cutter 53% of the he was a two pitch guy last year. And now Ashcraft is throwing the sinker as his third pitch over a quarter of the time. It gets a ton of ground balls, which you want in Great American Small Park. But the biggest thing, he throws a sinker for strikes. That's his strike pitch. The slider and cutter both get a ton, a ton of whiffs, or at least have gotten a ton of whiffs so far uh, this year in, in 11 innings. Ashcraft kind of got screwed his last start. Got, got got thrown out there for an extra inning, I think in the sixth, and gave up a few runs. Yeah, just, he did. You just hate that. Um, he, got I think, he got Ashcrafted that game. He did. You don't want to get, you don't want that to happen to you. But uh, but no, I actually, I mean, I think with the pitch mix change, with what we're seeing in the skills, a 14% swinging strike, 32% ball rate, like that's really good from Graham Ashcraft. I don't, still don't trust him to throw at home, but like in certain spots, I think it's really good. And I think, again, the way starting pitcher landscape is this year, you need to jump on these guys when you see that pitch mix with a uh, surge in skills, really. That's what we're seeing. So, so you throw them at home against the Angels next week? Against the Angels, I'd do it. I'd throw them at home against the Angels. What about the following week at Texas? That's a that's a little tough. It's a little okay. tough. So I just want to throw it He's out. I don't there. like these rapid fire questions. I just want to see how, how much you like the guy. I just to put you on the spot here. Martin Perez is a two start pitcher. We'll talk about for next week, but uh, it's the typical Martin Perez experience. Like he gets the job done, but it's not flashy, and it's one of those where he'll have an occasional blow up. But he just it's like the Wade Miley experience for me. It, it, at the end of the season. They're like a low four ZRA, 
a one two whip and they got you 160 innings. Yeah, you just know the seven and run outing is yeah. coming for Martin Perez. You yeah. don't want to be on that ship. Yeah, uh, Spaghetti, Spencer Arigetti. Um, I said he was serving up Arigetti and meatballs in Kansas City in his start. It was rough. I don't know if he'll be pitching there next week. So keep that in mind. Uh, David Robertson's getting added a lot. Alec Marsh, Shelby Miller. Proud to see that one. Yep. Rolled as Chapman because Bednar can't uh, figure it out. Uh, I'll let you take the roles here. Who else would you like to talk about pitching wise? Because some of these boys are. Uh, Deep, deep league formats. No, I mean, for anyone who missed our conversation on the Tuesday show, you ju- you did just rattle off a good number of, I think, decently skilled or save spec uh, relievers, yes. which I think is a good zag when everyone is trying to pick up Spencer Arigetti, you know, as a starter in place of your injured starter. So just kind of reiterating that point for anyone who missed it, I do think this is the year to at least have an extra reliever starting for you every week because uh the back end sp pool it's always been bad i think it's even worse this year with the uh injuries that we've seen to the frontline guys yeah when you do your waterfalls this week make sure you have your shelby millers your chapman's your robertson's your chris martin's even your slayton's who's the seventh inning guy eighth like in boston who's filthy like there's there's some of these guys that at least get you ratios and strikeouts and uh help you in those regards hey look at this joe g in the chat ashcraft at white Sox this sunday let's go yeah no that's a great one can you pick him up for that or is that an available thing i don't know i'm just kidding (laughs) just kidding all right i don't know joe's league but in my league i can't yes in uh two-step time let's talk two steps again we'll only talk about the ones that are probably relevant and um like are available to be picked up i should say and there aren't many of them this week uh you got and or we can also be the yay or nay like we did before merrill kelly uh, versus the Cubs at the Giants. Yes. Yep, he's going. Braves, Ronaldo Lopez at Houston versus Texas. I'm still doing it, but those are tough matches. Oh, that's tough. That's very tough, but I still think you roll it out there. Yes. Win potential and Lopez has pitched. And yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, Cole Irvin versus Minnesota at Kansas City. I will pass. I think as well, um, and that's the, the benefit of doing this podcast with you and kind of rechecking and recalibrating at Kansas City, in my mind, feels like a great matchup. It's not. Mm-hmm. Not it's anymore. Not. Bobby Wood Jr., double dong Sunday. Look forward to it. Um, Cutter Crawford and Garrett Whitlock both get Cleveland and Pittsburgh. You started on both. It's beautiful. That's a great way to go. Uh, right now, I think Chicago's got a lot of things coming up, so don't trust me on this one because Tyon might come back and screw things up midweek. But for now, they got Kyle Hendricks at Arizona versus Miami. I will pass. Um, Agreed. Agreed. If it's Ben Brown, would you play pitch Ben Brown? I'd I'd throw Ben Brown out there. I, I I'd be very hesitant, but I think I'd do it. All right. Cincinnati's supposed to be going six man rotations. So they have no two step next week. Cleveland, Bybee at Boston versus Oakland. I'm firing it up. You're firing it up. And I think we have a listener question on Bybee yep. again, but uh I, I it's too young to cut. Too early to cut bait there. He's I, I'd go for it. If, if Oakland puts up 15 on him, we can talk again. But yeah. um, that's where yeah. I'm at. Uh, Cal Quantrill at Philadelphia at home versus Seattle. No. No. <laughs> go run far away. I'm just going to stop at mentioning certain teams. That, that Seattle's not even here. good. But like, no. Just but I still auto. do it. It's yep. auto. Eric Fetty versus KC at Philadelphia. Uh, I'm passing. Probably not. Yep. I'd rather relief pitcher that one. Yep. Um, this one's interesting. Reese Olsen versus Texas at Minnesota. I know we kind of not talked up Olsen, but had some good things to say about Olsen. He got he got hit around pretty good his last start. Um, so I'm probably passing on Olsen going with Mize, but both yeah. of those against Texas is tough. I'd probably still go with Olsen. I'm not a Mize guy, but Minnesota's not good right now. But uh, good point. Good I'm point. cool if you want to pass on both. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, I don't think uh, Spaghetti is going to be pitching, so we'll skip through that one. Uh, Spencer, Lu- uh, Seth Lugo, not Spencer Lugo, at the White Sox versus Baltimore. I will be starting him. Yeah, I'm rolling with that. I'm a. Oh, angel. <laughs> I, I'm like, I'm just going to pass. The angel. Pa- <laughs> yeah. Patrick, Patrick Sandoval. Sandoval. That's great Ronaldo. American small park. Yeah. And, and I'm out. I'm after out. After going to the Rays, no thanks. Nope. Um, don't forget your your uh, Walker Bueller 
I have not seen that. I yeah, I he is on that. the Rotowire grid. I don't I don't I know. Have, I cover I news know. about six days a week. I have not seen that at all. So I think I'm we I don't curious. think we're far from Walker Bueller. And if and no, if we I'm, are talking fab pickups and stashes, I think now is the time to pick up Walker Bueller. If he's out there, I think you can get him cheap if he's a free agent because huh. the news isn't out there yet. But hundred percent no sees. Hundred percent no sees. That's is he? wild. Yep. That's, that's wild. That's int- I did not think it'd be that high. Ne- neither did I. That's pretty crazy. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that one plays out. That's probably uh, it's either Bueller or Yarborough that day against Washington. Uh Miami, AJ Puck and Edward Cabrera, Giants at Cubs. I will be doing Edward for sure. No puck. No puck. Agreed. Brewers, Joe Ross. This one's interesting now. Versus oh. San Diego at St. Louis before we get you know, maybe poo pooey on the subject. Maybe you like him. I'm not going to speak for you. Ross has actually been decent to start the season. 10 innings, two earned, 10 Ks, six walks is not great. But he went in the Great American Small Park and got the job done. I'm interested in this one. This is one of the few guys on the wire that I'm interested in streaming for two this week. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. Tons of ground balls so far from Joe Ross, but I think the biggest number you just mentioned there, Bubba, was 10. That's the number of innings. Like, yeah, two five. Yeah, the the San Diego start scares me. St. Louis start. I'm all aboard on right now. Yeah, yep. So if you if you can do daily leagues or something, keep Ross in mind for the the weekend. Minnesota Varland at Balti at uh, versus Detroit. I'll be passing. I think I will too. Just because Varland has really shown pretty much absolutely nothing. He can't throw strikes. He's not getting whiffs. The swinging strike is below 10% for Louis Varlin. A two whip, a nine ERA. Um, he's, he is one of the few. I know there's this saying out there, like if you can't start someone on a two-start week, you, you shouldn't have them. I don't. I, I uh, think I'd still try and hold different. on to Varlin if he can, but I yeah. want to see him do something first. Does Varlin have his UCL intact? You can hold on to him, yes. Yes, we're going to go that exactly. route right now. Exactly. Adrian Hauser versus Pittsburgh at the Dodgers pass. Moving along. Rodon at Toronto versus Tampa Bay start. Yep. Stripling versus St. Louis at Cleveland pass. Uh, no, yeah, Cleveland, pass. Cleveland will take him to pound town. Yeah. You're, you're, you're plus. I mean, I know you don't like Ross Stripling, but you're, yeah. I agree. Uh, Nola versus Colorado versus the White Sox get right week. Uh, it yeah, better be. You're, you're starting Nola no matter what, anyway. You never know. I mean, Nola, yeah, get right week, he could get bombed and he could dominate, and you just never know. Like I said, the Jordan Spieth of, of you uh, just start today. him every start, so you get that final stat line that looks okay in the end. Yep, agreed. Uh, Pittsburgh, Martin Perez at the Mets versus Boston. I'm starting him at the Mets is nice, especially against Adrian Hauser. Um, I know I just said that seven earned run outing is coming probably against Boston later on in the week. But I, 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 from what we've seen from Perez so far, I'd throw that. Yep. San Diego got Musgrove at Milwaukee versus Toronto pass. Pass. Milwaukee's one of the best offenses in baseball. Musgrove's been garbage. Toronto's the least mediocre. Damn. Some takes. I'd, I'd, I'd throw Musgrove. Okay, there we go. What would you like to bet on the week? No, okay. Uh George Kirby. Versus Cincinnati at Colorado. How are we feeling on George Kirby? Yeah, you're, you're throwing him. You're you throwing him. Yeah. You have to. You have to. <laughs> what are we doing? But if that is feels, if at Colorado pick. doesn't scare. What, what's more scary? At Cincinnati at, on the road or Colorado at Coors? Yeah, Cincinnati at home is scares the crap out of me compared to the at Colorado one, yes. Uh, Giants got Kyle Harrison and Jordan Hicks at Miami versus Arizona. You're starting both. Yep. St. Louis, Sunny Gray at Oakland versus Milwaukee, starting them. Beautiful. Tampa Bay, Savali and Lytle, Angels, and then at the Yankees. This, uh, I think you're starting both. I think you're starting both. I think you're starting Lytle. Uh, you're definitely starting Savali. Yep. I think you're starting both. I'm starting both. Uh, Texas, again, this is kind of to be determined, but if it's Lorenzen, see, then other sites have Bradford. So if it's Bradford at Detroit at Atlanta. Oh, my God. Um, decisions and a 15 you're doing it a 12 i don't that's where i draw the line that the at detroit is nice the at atlanta just scares the crap out of me but the way bradford's throwing i mean he's yeah good it's been good so yeah i'd, I'd do it in most leagues i'd do it in most leagues what about john gray um i have john gray in like every league he looked very good today 
Thursday against Oakland, but I'm throwing John Gray out there. The Detroit start is really good. Yeah, it's, it's hard to pass just, up. Exactly. Especially at Detroit. That's a pitcher's paradise. Yep. And you just hope like hell. Maybe the Atlanta the, for Gray, it's Sunday. So maybe uh, – no, none, they don't rest any of their guys. No, they don't. Yeah, he's screwed. But I still yeah. go with him. <laughs> he's screwed. <laughs> uh, you know, getaway days, you might get some. Uh, Toronto, Bassett, Yankees at Padres, yes. Yep. And then the last one, Patrick Corbin at the Dodgers oh, versus no, Houston. No. Holy crap. No, don't, don't do it. Oh, if you're doing that, if you're doing if you're starting Corbin at LA, you better be in a 22 team NL only league. I mean, I just wouldn't. I'd start. I'd start Spencer Nobody. Spaghetti. I'd start Air. Yeah. So uh, Kevin Hastings says roster resource has Bueller going Wednesday as well. I'm going to have to do some searching. I mean, he's been he has been throwing in triple oh. A, and I believe his last start went. I don't know the exact pitch, but it was like 60, 80, something like that. Yeah, I thought he had far. at least I thought he had at least one more in him, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Well, I'll have to go look into that some more here yeah. and figure it out. All right, let's talk listener questions before we head on out of here. We got a handful for you. Um, Mr. Draft Cheat commented on Ryan's picture of pick pitchers that were available, not exactly the group of saviors, he says. Okay. Um, and then you had a Hunter Brown comment to that, so that was good. Um, wake up says 16 lists from Ashcraft last time out. So supporting your thoughts. Let's go. Here we go. I always like wake up. Uh, CJ baseball. Cowser. He and add in a 15 team. Everyone's waiting on Heston. So not sure if Heston gets called up while Cowser is running like this. Yes. Play the guy that's playing in the bigs. Mm -hmm. And again, righty heavy week for Baltimore. So that, that, that bolsters our case even more. Yep. CJ has another question. What do I do with Bybee? I'm not confident. We see the numbers improve vastly. Sorry, Ryan. Actually, that's me that likes Bybee. Yeah, um, that's what I was, that was my, uh, um, my thing. Who would you Sorry look to that. trade for if you are trying to sell? That's the tough part because you're selling low. That's the pro And I don't, yeah, I don't know just like league-wise what you're, I, I would not try and sell Tanner Bybee. You're selling yeah. low and the whiffs are there. Velocity is okay. Like, I think that's he's going to be fine. He had like his his last start was rough. Start before that looked phenomenal, um, and he had this at times last year. He'd have like two or three good starts, then a blow up. That's just what he'd do because when he's not locating, because his fastball is so hittable. That's why Nick Pollock has told me. That's what I've even said in my write up about him. His fastball sucks, and, and I, I should say the velocity is down a tick on the fastball, but I. I don't know. He needs to change the pitch mix. It's that simple to me, but what do I know, right? But he's still heavy fat. Like his last start when he got shelled, almost 54% fastballs. The yeah. most he's thrown all season. That ain't it, dog. And so, he can't uh, throw it for strikes. A 41% ball rate on his fastball. That's the pitch that you throw for strikes. That should be down around 30. And it's yeah. just not there. So. Yeah. I, I'm holding and the, the good thing is the two secondaries that you wrote up this offseason, Bubba, have actually gotten better. The slider and changeup, and they they legitimate. I've watched Bybee's last two starts. Secondaries are there. Um yep. I, I I think it's just a tough stretch. I think he'll be fine. But yeah, man, yep. fastball is is bad. Like if you want to bench him for a starter, that's fine. I wouldn't try to move on, to put it that way. Yeah. Uh Joe G, who's also in the chat right now, says continue to hold on Rafaela and Meadows and Reese Olsen. 12 team mixed roto. Uh, Meadows, like I said earlier, I've, if the right replacement's there, I'm cool. Moving Agreed. on. Rafael, I'd, I'd keep Meadows I'd, yes. in a 12. I think I'd, I'd look elsewhere. There's got to be some better options out there. And Olsen's probably streamable in a 12. So, Reese Olsen, yeah. 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 Reese Olsen's Agreed. streamable in a 12. I'd hold on to Rafaela. Meadows, there's like, I'd probably play Brandon Marsh over Park on Meadows right now. Yeah. So something to think about like especially if i don't know if it's three or five outfielders but i like, guess five outfielders in a 12 your fifth outfielder can just be a stream every week eddie rosario yeah eddie rosario ken zone marsh like all these dudes are going to be out there on the wire so yeah have fun um oh you mentioned Beatty's available he also says in the chat Beatty was picked up not much starters pitchers schmidt and ashcraft uh well brian likes ashcraft so go pick up ashcraft and job drop, drop olsen there you go. God, I can't wait to victory lap Ashcraft. Oh, I can't wait to talk about it next week. Trust me. Gavin yeah. Sheets, another outfield stream. Yes. We'll if, yes. 100% on that one. And then uh, Burks, our buddy, Oregon Duck, says, any plans to do periodic updates on the listener leagues? When will the overall standings be available? We're working on that. That's in, in, in the works that yeah, will, should you know. be available sooner than later. But um, 
I, I I gave an update on the listener league last week, saying I'm in last um, in one of the two. I will uh, work on getting the overall standings set up once I'm out of last. <laughs> once the Masters is over, we'll, we'll work on things <laughs> like that. But, uh, no, I do need to hit them up to get that set up. Yeah, and no, I will get it taken care of. It won't take very long to do, so that will come. But what also will come is Sunday Night Fab. So I hope you guys enjoy the show. Any final thoughts, Mr. Bloomfield? Week four, man. Four out of 27. Uh, final thoughts, Jeff Mitziff in the chat. Who you got for the Masters? I, I will preface this non Scotty Scheffler division. Yes. Who are you going with, Bubba? Um, non Scotty. Um, I took Rom in my one and done. So that was more a strategy thing. Uh, we talked before the show. I've always been a big time Homa fan. He struggled this year great a really good 13 holes to start round one i'll i'll, I'll root for homa this week give me some max homa i'll, I'll take two homer or fitzpatrick give me one of those two all right i know i know he didn't play well today or at least for his first few but i think a live golfer is going to win it i think it's either going to be brooks and or dechambeau looked really good today or my kind of long shot is joaquin neiman yeah, I think a live golfer wins the Masters. I think that yeah, non Scotty division. I'd be very excited if he did, just because it just stirs up drama. Like it makes it fun, more talking points. Uh, Bryson would just tilt everybody's face off, which I think is so much fun. And yeah. um, like Patty Reed th- uh, played well, Sergio played okay. Like there are a lot of guys, and then last year a bunch of them finished near the top. I mean, so, and, so Augusta is as we turn this into a golf podcast, and you know this better than me. Course history is so huge there. A bunch of live guys have green jackets. Yeah, Dustin Johnson. I think there was eight or nine live guys here. Yep. So uh, it tells you a lot. It tells you a lot on what you need to know in that one. So I'm with you. That, I think they could. Scotty shot six under. Brooke, uh, Bryson shot seven. Going to be windy again on Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm looking forward to a big weekend. It's going to be awesome. So do you think? Do you think Tiger? Finishes all four days. No. Because he withdraws or doesn't make the cut? Withdraws. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't I want to wrong, see it. I wrong, but my, my gut says you're right. We'll see how Saturday. Right. He's got a long Saturday. Yeah. I'm it's not rooting for it. Let me clarify that to people that are listening. I'm not rooting for that by any sure. means. Yeah, but no, yeah. just the reality of where he's at in his career and what's going to take place on Friday, I'm nervous. I'm nervous for what goes on after that. So. A, lot of, a lot of steps on Friday. Yes, yes, we'll see. But all right, we'll wrap it up there. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Good luck and fab, and we'll see you guys next week. But until next time, you can check out Ryan on Twitter at RyanBHQ, the podcast at Bubba Bloom Pod. I'm at BD Intrick, and this is Bubba and the Bloom, episode 125. Catch you all next time.